One of the things that makes Beijing so unique are the hutongs. We are making it a point to visit as many hutongs as we can, searching for hidden gems, enjoying authentic flavors, and discovering unique sights in these iconic alleys. These narrow alleys are more than just walkways. They are cultural symbols of Beijing, where many generations have called home. But the rapid urbanization of Beijing in recent decades has threatened these historic treasures until preservation efforts halted the demolitions in 2017. Join us on this journey to witness the remarkable transformation of these hutongs into bustling attractions, vibrant streets, and lively bars, all while preserving the neighborhoods where people continue to live, dine, and play. We're going to try to ride a bike and show you around the hutong. Let's go! Hutongs are the narrow alleys between rows of single-story courtyard houses, also known as si he yuan. People have been staying here since the Yuan Dynasty. Some of the hutongs remain as residential areas, while others have been converted into shopping districts and tourist attractions. Cycling around the hutong is not easy. This one here has about like six or seven bands already. And you have to be very careful when you turn around the corners because you do not know what's going to happen if there is a car or if there's anybody who might be in your way. That was a close one. <laughs> Cycling through the hutong is a completely different experience. Now you get to travel through the hutong so much faster. Pretty cool. On my previous trip to Beijing, I also visited the hutongs, but the experience was completely different. I was sitting on a tri shop and we were just going around. I didn't see all these shops and all these people selling vegetables and meat and also like snacks and breakfast. This is so interesting and so different from the previous experience I had. We are heading to the main street to park our bikes and then we will continue walking through the hutongs. So we have came to this place that is right in the middle of Hutong, a place that probably not a lot of people except for locals know about this place to get Jianbing. Jianbing is like a rice pancake that has a lot of ingredients inside, almost like a burrito kind of filling. And this shop here in the Hutong is a very very local and very popular spot. It's such a mystery. I think they don't ask the same secret recipe. There's no secret recipe. What there is? You know why it is so popular? There's so many Jianbing around. Yeah. Huge! Oh my gosh, this is so big. I have no idea how you're gonna eat all of these. Look at this. It's as big as the size of your face. There's so many ingredients inside, I don't think I will be able to try everything in my first bite. But I'll try. Okay, I only got a skin. <laughs> I just bean paste with the egg and then if you can see inside there is the ham and then there is the cheese oh, Piping hot and piping fresh Super, it's really worth the wait actually Super delicious Every bite is like full of flavour, wow I wish there's so much more meat but at the same time like this in itself is super delicious. The next place we want to go is to find Mian Cha. For some reason, it's called Millet Marsh.
It's like peanut butter and sesame with some mush at the bottom. Oh, it's so hot. I can't tell what it is. The person was saying like, do not mix and stir it. If you mix and stir it, like everything just blends in gelsen. So like he recommended not to do that. It's very, very hot. If you have never eaten millet before, it's kind of like mashed potato, but it's not. With the sesame on top of it, it's super fragrant. And then with the peanut butter sauce over it, it makes it super delicious. You wouldn't have expected somebody to sell mian cha like this at this hutong in the middle of nowhere. It's like mashed potato to me. And I love mashed potatoes. For lunch, we decided to go to this place that sells really famous noodles. It's called Pang Mei. And we waited for like 15 minutes before we can get in. I think we got a feast here. Chickpeas. So I think this is supposed to be like chicken shreds or something. It's good. One more dish that we ordered is the beef noodles. And this beef noodles looks incredible. This is really spicy, but it tastes so good. With the beef. Super delicious, super tender. I think it really deserves this Michelin beef. This is the drum tower behind me. And that is the bell tower. These two towers are the tallest buildings in the entire Hu Tongs. So everybody will be able to recognize where these two locations are, which is the south one and which is the north one. Many of these relics have been preserved and the way they do so is by using the same materials and the same designs as the original. We got tickets. <laughs> So the drum tower and the bell tower were originally used for musical reasons and afterwards they were used by the governments to actually tell the time to the people living in these hutongs around the area. Aaron, come and play the games. <laughs> what games? So there are two games here. The first one is like... You have to play with the music rhythm and the second one you get to ring the bell, I think. Which one do you want to play? This one. This one? Okay. I got perfect score all the time. Wow. My final score is... It's too increasing. It's still keep increasing. This takes a while. Oh yes, 109,000. Made it. There used to be 25 drums in this tower, but only one survived. This is probably the tallest building in the 1600s in Beijing. Burned down thrice, but Every time it's burned down, people need a way to actually figure out what's the time. So this has to be rebuilt again. It is actually pretty interesting to see the Hu Tong from all the way up here. Now we're heading towards the bell tower right behind me. This is the king of ancient bells. So right behind me is Nan Lo Guxiang, arguably the most popular Hutong street in the entire Beijing. It is filled with commercial shops, 
uh, full of tourists, full of locals. There's a lot of food to eat, there's a lot of things to see. Super refreshing. I'm going to have the whole thing by myself. <laughs> Everyone is navigating. Trying to find the Suhaiyuan or the courtyard house. Not every house here is open to the public. I, I really like how they dress up the last time around. I wish I have one of this in my wardrobe at home. I wish I can wear this when I go for like important gatherings so that I'm the most important person in the whole entire space. <laughs> In 1949, there were over 3,000 hutongs and right now, there are less than 1,000 hutongs. Many of these hutongs have been converted into touristic areas such as bars and souvenir shops and cafes. There is this beautiful garden right beside the hutong that we are walking through. And in this garden, which is sitting beside the lake, there is a watchtower. And this watchtower looks super stunning. Super pretty. There's so many lakes in this area of Beijing, the northwestern side within the second loop and this lake is one of the larger ones There's so much excitement and energy going on. Some of these streets have turned into a commerce district and now there's just so much hubbub when you can buy and eat food and ride on these tri shores. I think it's pretty exciting nowadays. 14 years ago, I was literally standing right here at Shi Cha Hai and I was impressed by the fact that this place was super beautiful. Looking around at how the willows form, so much feels coming back today again. Stopping over for some tea to beat the heat out there. Hot tea is always good tea. We got the jasmine green tea and it came with like some teapot and two other contraptions. Two of them are glass and then one of it is like a teapot but I have no idea how she makes it. This is to collect the loose leaf that will fall. Yeah. Brew for about 10 to 20 seconds. This place changes so drastically as the night falls. All the bars are popping up or they've always been here but they just start playing like live music so it kind of catches our attention. And almost every single bar has like someone singing there instead of a band. This is so bustling. It's more crazy than I've ever remembered. As the night falls, the other side of Beijing's hutongs come alive. 
with bustling nightlife and street vendors. This metamorphosis mirrors the transformation seen in historic urban districts all across the world. City governments often have to decide between demolishing old spaces to make way for modern business or tourist districts, or to preserve the cultural heritage. Beijing, however, seems to have found a middle ground. The hutongs stand as a testament to the success of blending tradition with contemporary needs. In this video, we've only scratched the surface of hutongs. There is a wealth of history and culture waiting to be explored. So Beijing, we'll be back someday.